thanks for joining us again at Life with the Beckers. Today we're doing a cooking video, just a nice, quick, easy, uh, cooked shredded chicken prep video. So hopefully this will help you out. Um, it definitely was a brilliant epiphany that Jesse had that was like, why don't we do it like this? And we've never gone back. So hopefully it helps you and uh, let's check out the Becker bullets and we'll get shredding. All right, guys, so welcome back to Cooking with the Beckers. This week, we're gonna show you how to food prep some chicken. This has already been thawed for a bit. First, we'll boil it in some water, and then we're gonna chop it up and turn it into shredded chicken. With these, this is gonna be the magic of the whole thing. Good chow. So, you can normally tear it apart with like forks, but these are like mechanical forks, so even better. First, get in some water. Riveting. Oh yeah. So now, instead of just watching this pot boil, we'll see you in a sec. All right, so the water's not boiling yet, but we're still gonna plop that chicken in there. Make sure it gets nice and waterfied. You can just pour all the juices oh. and everything. <laughs> Pour the juices and everything in there that's in the bag, it'll be fine. So it makes it extra chickeny. Yeah, some people oh, like. No. Oh no. Oh! Some people like to use chicken broth instead of water. Um, you know, you can add vegetables to the water as well if you want. I like to keep it really simple, so all I do is put a little bit of salt in the water with the chicken, and that's it. Perfect. Sea salt grinder. Ka chow. But yeah, so now we'll uh, bring that to a boil, and then once it's boiling, we'll turn the heat down for a simmer. What's nice about doing it this way is the broth is built in. Brothatize me, Cap'n. These chicken eggs on top are all part of the process. Just let it happen. <laughs> At this point, the chicken clearly wants to get out of the hot water. But don't worry, we won't let it escape. That's what the lid's for. Is it chicken egg or chicken foam? Leave it in the comments below. Get back in there, you. Ha. Okay, so it hasn't quite started boiling all the way yet, but we're still gonna turn it down. That way it doesn't overcook the chicken. Yeah, I would do like medium high. Um, like seven. Yeah. And then we'll go ahead and put the lid on it and that'll just uh, keep everything steaming and um, keep the heat in so that that way um, it'll make sure that it gets cooked but it doesn't dry out. Just like that piece that we saw kind of trying to escape. Keeping the lid on will make sure that if any pieces stick out above the water that they still get cooked and they're hydrated and they're not all dry and rubbery so we'll set a 15 minute timer and we'll come back boom all right so 15 minutes has elapsed and the chicken can no longer hold its breath so the bubbles are starting to come up <clears throat> but all the uh, chicken foam has moved over to the sides so that's good So, we'll just strain out all the water. Be careful of hot water. And of hot lids. And hot pans and burners and anything else hot. So there's our delicious boiled chicken. We're gonna let it cool off before we do anything else. If you wanna check it with a meat thermometer, now would be the time to do so, but I know that that's definitely cooked, so we're good. Cooked. Just kidding, I didn't touch it. <laughs> all right, so we let it cool pretty much just enough to not like melt our pan at all, or melt our uh, little bucket here, bowl, whatever you want to call it. Then we turn on the thing and chicketize it. Oh, probably low. Low at first. Um, yeah, actually, let's real quick stop for a sec. 
Um, let's take the knife and we'll cut them in half because that gives the um chicken time to think about its life choices <laughs> yeah it makes it a little easier on the hand mixer if they're a little bit broken up it's okay Linda. man I'm glad I'm not a chicken If you're having trouble, like stab it down on the top and then that way it kind of like tears into the chicken a bit. That way it's not just like a, a wig looking thing. That way it doesn't look like a wig, a chicken wig. That should be good. Bam. No. And then now you can just like bag it up or whatever. We're going to make some chicken tacos, but uh, that's how you food prep chicken. Yeah, yeah, as many chicken breasts as you want to do. Um, and then you can just shred it all up really fast and this way no sore wrists. And uh, yeah, just take some of the headache out of that meal prep. So maybe one sore wrist. <laughs> I guess the last little bit here is going to be bagging it up. We just use like these little things. We're gonna let it cool for a sec before we put it in there. That way we don't get like leached bag into our uh, our chicken there. But yeah, thanks so much for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Back to you, Jesse and Carmen. All right, and we're all done with that. So um, thank you, Mr. Talking Baggy. So uh, yeah, hopefully that helped you guys. You know, not a, not a lot to it. If you wanna add things, you can. The only side note I wanted to make is that if you have a KitchenAid that has a whisk attachment, you can also use that too. Um, you definitely wanna cut it into a couple of smaller pieces. And I have like a plastic cover that kind of goes over the bowl to keep spillage from happening. Putting something like that on is really smart. It keeps everything in there, but then that way no one has to use any muscle at all. So that's actually the most ideal method, but I know most people don't have a KitchenAid. So the hand mixer is way more accessible, so that's why we showed that. But if you have the KitchenAid, that does work too. Um, but yeah, hopefully that helped. If it did, uh, subscribe. If it didn't, um, subscribe anyway, because we might make a different video that'll help you. So uh, yeah, share, likes, um, all that stuff. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye.